John Sweeney is our next speaker. Uh, John's the Senior Policy Officer and Operations Manager at the Information Commissioner's Office uh, for Wales. Uh, it provides independent advice and guidance about data protection and freedom of information. John's key areas of responsibility are the private sector, voluntary organisations, charities, local government and the police. Uh, we can only hope that uh, his take on data protection is not quite as complicated in the digital domain as it might otherwise appear to be. John, the floor is yours. Thanks very much. It's nice to be here. Um, I think we lost a few more people at the coffee break, which um, is perhaps the prospect of hearing about the Data Protection Act, but I never take it personally. Um, the, the purpose of my presentation today um, is to talk about essentially um, the Data Protection Act um, and the importance of it. Obviously today you've been talking about digital collaboration. Um, with collaboration comes the potential to share information, uh, more information. Where that information relates to identifiable living individuals, then it's personal data. When you're dealing with personal data, you need to comply with the Data Protection Act. So I'm just going to briefly um, talk about um, the, the sort of key issues to consider um, if you're handling personal data. Um, the focus is going to be on the Information Commissioner's Office. Um, we produced a, a code of practice on data sharing. So I'm just going to pull out some key elements from that. Um, the bad news is um, I haven't found a way yet to make the Data Protection Act exciting. Um, but the good news is I will be brief. Um, this is just a summary of the ICO and what we do. Essentially, there's, there's two strands of what we deal with um, in relation to what we call information rights. So on the one side, you have transparency, openness, and access to official information. So there's a couple of pieces of legislation we um, regulate there, Freedom of Information Act and the Environmental Information Regulations. Um, on the other side, you have privacy um, and the treatment of, of personal data, um, and you have the Data Protection Act and the Privacy and Electronic Communications Regulations, which is a bit of a mouthful. They're designed to stop you getting unsuccessfully, getting spam texts and what have you. Um, so what we do is we enforce and regulate, so we've got enforcement powers, um, we can issue undertakings, enforcement notices, um, and monetary penalties for serious breaches of um, of the Data Protection Act and Privacy and Electronic Communications Regulations. We produce um, advice and guidance, so we go out and speak to people and we've got lots of guidance on our website. We deal with complaints um, and we also um, deal with good practice, so we do audits of um, organisations and we also do advisory visits to tell people what they are doing right and what they're not. What they're not. Um, so, to cut to the chase, this is why you need to um, comply with the Data Protection Act, and this is why it's important. Um, we have the power to issue monetary penalties for serious breaches of the Data Protection Act. The slide there is just an example of an organisation um, that breached the Data Protection Act by um, disclosing personal information into the public domain when they shouldn't have. They, that was the highest monetary penalty we've issued to date, which is £325,000. Um, we've issued since April 2010 £2.2 million worth of monetary penalties um, for breaches of the Data Protection Act. In this particular case, um, an NH tr NHS Trust IT provider um, engaged an individual to dispose of some hardware, some, um, some disks. Um, they ended up being sold on eBay. Um, and it was found that there was patient details on there. In some instances, relating to sort of HIV status, there was also staff information on there, um, NI numbers, um, addresses, um, details of criminal convictions. So some really sensitive stuff ended up out there. Um, so it's just really to, that's, that example is just to highlight why it's important to take note of the Date Protection Act um, and why it's important to have proper contracts in place when you're dealing with, with third parties. Um, just this is the ICO's approach when we're talking about data sharing. Um, so 
the key, the key messages we want to get across is it's not a barrier to data sharing where sharing of information is um, legitimate and justified. Um, we recognise that you, it's important to be able to share um, information in this age, that information is being shared in the private and public sectors and that it has to happen. And what the Data Protection Act does, it provides a framework um, which allows organisations to find ways of sharing information where that, that is a legitimate um, exercise. Um, it's important to have limitations and safeguards, um, so you need to think about um, sharing only the information that you need to share, um, and safeguards is about security, um, which I'll talk about a, a bit about in a minute. Um, it's important to get it right for organisations, it's your reputation that's on the line, um, so it's important to take account of um, Date Protection Act considerations at an early stage. Often what we find is organisations have a data sharing initiative, they don't always think of the Data Protection Act in advance. What happens then is they're trying to find some bolt-on solution at a late stage, um, and it can then it can become a barrier or at least a speed bump, um, which when you're talking about the private sector can have significant implications in terms of funding uh, and putting initiatives online. Um, so our message really is to think about whether you're sharing personal data, and if you are, um, think about it upfront. So what we've done is we've produced um, a statutory code of practice, um, the data sharing code of practice, which is that lovely green document in the corner of the screen. Um, you can access it through our website um, in PDF format, or you can order hard copies if you like. I just encourage you, if you are, um, sharing personal data to have a look at the code of practice. It's designed to give sort of practical advice on how to appropriately um, share personal data in a legitimate manner. Um, these are the considerations you need to think about before you decide to share personal information. So I'd say that obviously the key thing is think about is there a need to share personal information? Can you um, I mean, can you hit your objective without sharing personal information? Can you remove personal identifiers from the information? Or can you anonymize the information? Because if you can, um, you won't then be dealing with personal data. You won't need to um, consider the, the Data Protection Act, and you'll save yourself a lot of, uh, a lot of work. Um, you'll need to think about the legal implications. So public sector organizations they need to have the legal power to share information. It's slightly different for voluntary organisations, third sector information uh, uh, organisations. They still need to comply with the Data Protection Act, but essentially they can share information as long as it's not unlawful to do so. Um, think about what the risks are and what the benefits are. Um, think about whether there's going to be any detriment to individuals. Um, think about, in particular, in particular for public sector organisations, but more and more private and third sector information where they're getting into the delivery of um, public services. Think about the consequences of not sharing. In some cases, there can be significant detriment to individuals if you don't share information. Um, consent, choice and transparency. That's all about um, what you tell the individual, the customer or the client. Um, consent is one of the ways that the Data Protection Act provides for legitimizing sharing of information, but it's not the only way. Um, consent is most likely to be needed where you're sharing confidential or, or sort of sensitive information, like health information. Um, choice, so there's no point trying to obtain consent if you're gonna share the information anyway, if you're legally obliged to do so, um, or if you need to do it to fulfill a contract. <clears throat> um, transparency is, Essentially, you need to tell individuals what you're doing with their information. Um, so you need to tell them what's going to happen to it, why you're sharing it, um, and be upfront about that. Uh, I won't go into the issue of, of PIA because that's a whole new ball game, and I think we're a bit short for time. Um, if you decide that you are going to share information, obviously you need to manage that sharing properly. So good governance is essential. And what we're talking about by governance is establishing who the data controller is. So what's the organization that's going to make decisions about the information? Who's going to decide what happens to that information? 
who's got over, overall responsibility for the information. Ideally, somebody at a senior level within the organisation should have overall responsibility. Um, have you got a data sharing agreement in place, which is essentially an agreement between the, the various partners um, about who's going to be responsible for what parts of the sharing? Um, security. <laughs> essentially, um, if you're going to share information with a partner, you need to be satisfied that they've got appropriate security measures in place. Um, because if something goes wrong and it's your information that you've shared with them, potentially you're going to be found at fault. So you need to have appropriate security measures in place. And the Data Protection Act doesn't define what's appropriate, so it allows you to decide what is appropriate, have an account of the type of information you're sharing, um, the cost of security measures, <clears throat> and the potential detriment if information was sort of compromised. But you need to think about that. Um, data standards, there, there's a number of um, principles in the Data Protection Act known as quality, uh, data quality measures, um, so, or principles rather. So the, the principles are that information's got to be adequate, relevant and not excessive, accurate and up to date and not kept longer than necessary, so you need to think about all of these things. Obviously staff training you'll need to think about if they're handling personal information. Um, an important um, thing to think about is individuals' rights. Individuals under the Data Protection Act have got the right to access the personal information your organisation holds about them. It's called the right of subject access. So if you're sharing information and an individual makes a request to access information, you need to think about how you handle those sorts of requests, um, making sure that you don't sort of um, impinge on the individual rights. So these are all the things you need to think about. Um, notification is really a reference to what happens if, there's a comp if the data is compromised, um, who's going to do what, um, who's going to notify the customers if you have to. Um, you need to think about all of these things. Um, I just want to talk about data sharing agreements, because um, these are a way that you can um, set out how you're going to comply with the Data Protection Act. We've got a lot of information on our um, website about data sharing agreements. There's a section in the um, data sharing code of practice and we've also got checklists available that um, will talk you, sort of talk you through the key things you need to think about. Um, essentially, they, they can take a variety of uh, forms, they're not prescriptive, they can be useful at a strategic level um, and they can also be useful um, at a detailed level in deciding um, how information is going to be shared in practice. Um, and um, whether organizations are ready to start sharing personal information. Um, these are the things that a data sharing agreement should include. So clearly you want to be clear on the purpose or purposes of sharing, who's going to have access to the information, um, exactly what information is going to be shared, how the data will be transferred in practice, um, quality issues we've already touched on, so the accuracy, relevance and, and usability of information. Um, data security again, retention and deletion, again that important issue of individual rights. Um, I just want to take a second here to, to just give a plug to one of our sponsors, the Welsh Government. Um, they've got an initiative called the Shared in Personal Information Programme. Um, it's independent from the Information Commissioner's Office. Um, it's mainly focused, to be honest, at the delivery of public services. Um, but um, the Welsh Government recognised that um, sharing personal information is critical to delivering effective public services. Um, so they put this programme in place. Um, it promotes a collaborative um, approach to service delivery that protects and safeguards personal information when necessary. Um, the programme promotes the use of the Wales Accord on the sharing of person, personal information, which is known as WASPI, um, which is a basis for, um, as the slide says, for a single approach for all sectors across Wales. Um, what it does do, which is useful, is it provides template information sharing protocols on its website. Um, so it's encouraging organisations to take a sort of common approach and it's done that by producing these, um, these templates. Um, even if it's not relevant to your sort of organisation, if you're not involved in public uh, sector um, service delivery, 
then you might find it useful if you're talking about, um, again, um, putting in place information sharing agreements, you might be able to get some good practice from that. So if you are interested, I just encourage you to have a look at the um, SPI website and also wasp has got a separate um, website. So um, assuming you've decided to share personal information um, and assuming you've done it properly, obviously you need to make sure that you review arrangements. Sounds pretty obvious, but um, you just think about putting in place arrangements to review your agreements, to think about things like whether the, whether the data is still needed. So if you don't need to continue sharing, then you shouldn't. Do you need to keep the, the, the existing information, information you've already sh uh, shared, or can it be destroyed? Think about privacy notices. Now, privacy notices are, are the method by which you tell individuals what you're doing with their personal data. Um, so have you changed anything you're doing with the information and do you need to tell individuals about any changes? Um, are staff entitled to continue to access personal information? So how do you manage into things um, th such as internal job moves? So if somebody change, changes their job, do they still need to have access to um, the information they previously did? Um, have there been any developments in sort of security solutions that you need to take account of? Has the sensitivity of the data being shared changed at all? Um, so do you need to review um, whether more stringent security measures need to be um, put in place? And, and again, um, reference is there to, um, to, to managing the um, rights of individuals. So how do you respond to queries um, and requests for personal data? How do you deal with complaints? I, I, this is sort of a common theme through the slides, but it is a fundamental part of the Data Protection Act. Um, so it's something you do need to consider. So I rattled through that quite quickly, I appreciate. It was just, I mean, if you take anything away from this, I suppose the key messages I want to get across are, if you're dealing with personal data, think about it up front. If you're not sure what you're doing, think of the ICO, look on our website, if you can't get what you're looking for, then feel free to give us a ring. Um, some of the information you can access from the ICO side, we've got a, a data sharing code of practice, we've got guidance on the use of cloud computing, um, we've got um, personal information online small business checklist, and we've, in the summer we, we produce a practical guide to IT security that's aimed at small businesses. Um, so there's quite a lot of information there. There's an anonymization code of practice which is due to be published shortly. Um, it's a bit delayed because of the number of responses we had to the consultation. And then on the SPI on WASPy side, there's just a few um, details of, of websites and where you can get further information. Um, so I think I've uh, hopefully got us back on track timing-wise. Um, if you have any questions at the end, please feel free to, to shout. Thanks very much.